Hello friends, welcome to Read With Me. Today we are continuing our fall book series with Johnny Appleseed, A Tall Tale Retold and Illustrated by Stephen Kellogg. This is our second Johnny Appleseed. It's just a little bit of a different version. I will be creating an easy apple art activity that you can do at home. John Chapman who later became known as Johnny Appleseed, was born on September 26, 1774. When the apples on the trees surrounding his home in Leominster, Massachusetts, were as red as the autumn leaves. John's first years were hard. His father left the family to fight in the Revolutionary War, and his mother and baby brother both died before his second birthday. How very sad he lost his mom and a little brother at a very young age. By the time John turned six, his father had remarried and settled in Longmeadow, Massachusetts. Within a decade, their little house was overflowing with 10 more children. Look at all of those children. He has lots of brothers and sisters. Do you have lots of brothers and sisters? Probably not quite that many. Nearby was an apple orchard. Like most early American families, the Chapmans picked their apples in the fall, stored them in the cellar for winter eating, and used them to make sauces, cider, vinegar, and apple butter. John loved to watch the spring blossoms slowly turn into the glowing fruit of autumn. Do you like to eat apples in which way? I like to just eat apples. I like to have apple butter on bread. That is one of my favorite treats. Watching the apples grow inspired in John a love of all of nature. He often escaped from his boisterous household to the tranquil woods. Boisterous is a large word. It means it is noisy and busy. However, tranquil means it is soft and peaceful and calm and quiet. The animal sensed his gentleness and trusted him. No wonder he wanted to get away from his house with all those brothers and sisters. He needed some peace and quiet. As soon as John was old enough to leave home, he set out to explore the vast wilderness to the west. When he reached the Allegheny Mountains, he cleared a plot of land and planted a small orchard with the pouch of apple seeds he had carried with him. And here he is chopping down a very large tree. John walked hundreds of miles through the Pennsylvania forests, living like the Indians he befriended on the trail. As he traveled, he cleared the land for many more orchards. He was sure the pioneer families would be arriving before long, and he looked forward to supplying them with apple trees. Here he is chopping down another enormous tree. When a storm struck, he found shelter in a hollow log were built a lean-to. On clear nights, he stretched out under the stars. Over the next few years, John continued to visit and care for his new orchards. The winter slowed him down, but he survived happily on a diet of butternuts. He is taking shelter in a cave down here at the bottom of the page. One spring, he met a band of men who boasted that they could lick their weight in wildcats. They were amazed to hear that John wouldn't hurt an animal and had no use for a gun. And look, they're all wearing what's called a coonskin cap. And what does John have in his hands? A raccoon. He says, you can't have my raccoon. They challenged John to compete at wrestling, the favorite frontier sport. He suggested a more practical contest, a tree chopping match. The woodsmen eagerly agreed. Who do you think is going to win this contest? And why do you think that he would ask for a tree chopping contest. Oh my, look at the wood chips and look at all those men working hard trying to win the contest. Who won? John Chapman. When the sawdust settled, there was no question about who had come out on top. Look, everybody else is tired. John was pleased that the land for his largest orchard had been so quickly cleared. That was his ulterior motive. He wanted them to help him clear the land for his next orchard. That was quite smart of him. He thanked the exhausted woodsmen for their help and began planting. 
During the next few years, John continued to move westward. Whenever he ran out of apple seeds, he hiked to the eastern cider presses to replenish his supply. Before long, John's plantings were spread across the state of Ohio, so he is making it further west. Meanwhile, pioneer families were arriving in search of home sites and farmland. Look, they're coming in covered wagons. That's how people used to travel before vehicles. John had located his orchards on the routes he thought they'd be traveling. And as he hoped, the settlers were eager to buy the young trees. Look, because they would like some fresh fruit wherever they decide to build a new home. John went out of his way to lend a helping hand to his new neighbors. Often he would give his trees away. People affectionately called him Johnny Appleseed, and he began using that name. So that is how he got his nickname. People just started calling him Johnny Appleseed because he always had apples and was either giving them away or selling them. He particularly enjoyed entertaining children with tales of his wilderness adventures and stories of the Bible. Everybody's sitting around the fire listening to his stories. In 1812, the British incited the Indians to join them in another war against the Americans. The settlers feared that Ohio would be invaded from Lake Erie. And see, John is looking and he sees the ships coming in. It grieved Johnny that his friends were fighting each other. But when he saw smoke from a burning cabin, he ran through the night shouting a warning at every door. Look, he's telling everybody to wake up. He doesn't want anybody to get hurt. After the war, people urged Johnny to build a house and settle down. He replied that he lived like a king in his wilderness home. He returned to the forest he loved. During his long absences, folks enjoyed sharing the recollections of Johnny. They retold his stories and sometimes... They even exaggerated them a bit. And this is how he became a tall tale. People exaggerating the stories. Some recalled Johnny sleeping in a treetop hammock and chatting with the birds. Others remembered that a rattlesnake had attacked his foot. Fortunately, Johnny's feet were as tough as elephant hide. So the fangs didn't penetrate. They say because he never wore shoes. It was said that Johnny had once tended a wounded wolf and then kept him for a pet. See, he's helping this wolf. It got shot with an arrow. An old hunter swore he'd seen Johnny frolicking with a bear family. Look, there's a mama bear and two baby bears. The storytellers outdid each other with their tall tales about his feats of survival in the untamed wilderness. Look, they're saying he was carried away by an eagle and he um, defeated a mountain lion and jumped across the river and fell down a waterfall in a canoe and almost got eaten by an enormous fish. Those are tall tales. As the years passed, Ohio became too crowded for Johnny. He moved to the wilds of Indiana, where he continued to clear land for his orchards. Look, still cutting down more trees so he can make room for his apple trees. When the settlers began arriving, Johnny recognized some of the children who had listened to his stories. Now they had children of their own. Everybody is moving westward. It made Johnny's old heart glad when they welcomed him as a beloved friend and asked to hear his tales again. When Johnny passed 70, it became difficult for him to keep up with his work. Then, in March of 1845, while trudging through a snowstorm near Fort Wayne, Indiana, he became ill for the first time in his life. Well, he's a very old man at this point. Johnny asked for shelter in the settler's cabin. A few days later, he died. Curiously, Johnny's stories continued to move westward without him. Folks maintained they'd seen him in Illinois or that he'd greeted them in Missouri, Arkansas, or Texas. Others were certain that he'd planted trees on the slopes of the Rocky Mountains or in California's distant valleys. Even today, people still claim they've seen Johnny Appleseed. Um, can you tell me how Johnny Appleseed got his name? 
That's right. It was because he always had apple seeds and apple plants to either sell or give to other people. So people started calling him Johnny Appleseed. Now I told you we were going to have an easy craft you or art activity. We have a sheet of paper, a knife, make sure you get an adult to help you with this, and an apple. Mine is a yellow apple. And then you need some paint. I chose red paint and yellow paint. Now what you're going to do, make sure you have an adult help you with this. Don't cut your apple on the stem side. It won't work. Lay it down and cut it in half horizontally. This is horizontally. And if you've never cut an apple open like this, look, there is a star inside. See the beautiful star that the core and the seeds make? Isn't that beautiful? Then what you're going to do is take one half of your apple and dip it in the paint and make sure it gets nice and coated. I kind of picked mine up and looked. It's almost coated. Tap it around there in the paint. Then you're going to take it and you can press it on your paper and pick it up and you can see the star shape. And maybe this yellow one will work better. Now I'm gonna put my other half of apple in this yellow and hopefully it will work better. Some apples work better than others. It just depends on what their core is like. And then you can make another apple print. And that one you can sort of see the star. And then just keep making prints all over your paper. Oh, that one the star showed up, didn't it? And now let's make another one wherever you please. And then you know why I chose red and yellow? One, because those are apple colors. And two, because if we mix red and yellow, we get a new color. But it didn't quite work out. Red and yellow are supposed to make orange when you mix them together. But of course it doesn't want to work out for me today. I thought that would be neat for you to see. It would be another learning activity to learn how you mix colors and make a new color. But anyways, you can go around and fill up your entire paper. And look how pretty that one turned out. It had a little bit of red on it. And keep making and fill up your whole paper. When you fill it all up, it looks absolutely gorgeous. If you liked this book and you liked this art activity and you would like to continue um, seeing art activities, please give me a thumbs up and please consider subscribing. And thank you if you have already subscribed. I really appreciate it. Until next time.